Hey, it's Tim here. In today's video, I'm covering the new workbook optimizer in Tableau 22.1. Let's just get straight into it and let me show you how this works. When you go to publish a workbook, if I just go to server up here and hit publish, um, you'll see that the usual publish interface will pop up. But at the very bottom, if I just sort of highlight the space here, there's a new option, which is called the workbook optimizer. When you go ahead and click on that, it brings up this pop up. And this pop up is, I think, a really, really nice step. For a long time, when people have been building workbooks, there's been a lot of um, sort of best practice that sometimes goes, um, you know, as folklore. Like people will say, oh, don't build too many tables. Don't you do too much of that. Don't do too much of this. Oh, don't use fix. Don't use expanding dashboards. All of these things are just little tips and tricks that you pick up while talking to people. But what Tableau have done here is they've codified it into a best practice optimizer. And the optimizer doesn't change your workbook, but it gives you guidance on how you can improve it and how you can make things better in the actual workbook. And so if you look at this screen, there's a couple of elements. Let's just break this down a little bit. You've got the number of tests that Tableau has run on the top right hand side. So it has passed 10 out of 12 tests. The two that it's failed are here in red and amber. Now, typically Tableau doesn't use red, amber, green. So I wonder if that's just, you know, a stylistic thing for this particular feature. Everywhere else in the product, they use the uh, blue and orange sort of moniker. But nonetheless here, it kind of makes sense. It kind of is like a traffic light system. But for those who are colorblind or who are visually impaired, this might be a little bit tricky. So maybe one for the feedback for the future. Now, if we expand each and every one of these, you do actually get an explanation. So if we start at the top, the one in red, uh, multiple data sources have unused fields. Now this is actually quite a good one because when you publish workbooks to production databases, um, you're supposed to take out any fields that are unused because essentially when the workbook loads, it's gonna load those fields even though they're not being used. So it does take up a little bit of compute time that's unnecessary. So here you're being told what those fields are. You've got the sales target, and you've got the Superstore sales, you've actually got these fields here. So these fields and that field there are not being used in the entire workbook. So it's saying, hey, just remove these from the extract or just mark them as unused fields and hide them. And then Tableau won't even bother looking at them. So that's a really, really nice thing. And then the final step is they've added a little link which takes you off to some supporting guidance. So if we go and click on that, we actually get taken to a page. And at the moment, these aren't working. I'm recording this video just a little bit ahead of the release just to get ahead of it. But nonetheless, when you do go to the link, it will actually show you the support guidance on that feature. So I know Tableau is working to build some of these guides because they are very specific to this optimizer to kind of give it all um, some context in one nice place, but nonetheless, this is here. I think this is fantastic. So it's a really sort of nicely broken down thing. Here's something that's going wrong. Here's how you can improve it. And here's why it helps. Super clear. You don't have to be an expert anymore to know how to optimize a workbook. That is a huge win for lots of companies who are building workbooks and it's going to make a lot of life um, easier. Now, if we dig into these uh, tests a little bit, you can see here that one is unused field. We have this one, which is um, uh, one needs review. Calculation uses multiple data sources. You can see this is amber, not because this is a bad thing to do, but because it can sort of slow things down. When you're using multiple data sources, let's say you're using something like a blend, that does slow down the query time. So Tableau is just telling you, know, hey, if you can do this with a single data source, why not do that? So again, if you're really sort of looking for those, you know, fine tuning milliseconds in performance, and this is going to be something you can look at as well. So calculating um, using multiple data sources is obviously something there. Again, we've got these links, but they don't quite go to where they should go because the pages haven't been loaded yet. Now, if I go down to the 10 that passed, I like that they're showing you what's working really well. This is sort of a nice checklist. So let's just make this a little bit bigger so you can see what this actually is. So we've got the number of data sources being used, unused data sources, number of views in a dashboard, number of visible worksheets, number of hidden workbook sheets, calculation length, number of LODs, multiple connections in the data sources, number of filter and non-materialized columns. So this is a really thorough check. I mean, if you don't know much about optimizing workbooks, if all you did was look at this before you published and then did a little bit of research and use some of the help guides to really drill into them, what it will do is it will get you into a good practice of doing these as you build in the first place. And so for a lot of people, I'm hoping they're just going to open up Tableau, go to publish, and there'll probably be an initial effort to start to try and standardize how some of this is done within an organization. But nonetheless, this is going to be a huge, huge help. 
Some of the things I'd love to see is an API around this. I can see lots of server admins who will look at this and go, huh, I'd love to run this optimizer score on all the workbooks on my server so that I can get the workbooks that aren't performing well. See if any of that correlates with performance issues that I'm seeing, and maybe we can tackle that. And I can just create a list, a task list that I can send to users and say, hey, I found your workbook. It's getting a low score on the optimizer. Here are some steps that are recommended by Tableau. And by the way, Tableau have these supporting help guides to make that work. That would be a fantastic little step. I'm sure it's possible. I'm, I'm sure this is just an early release. Now, the other thing that I'm looking forward to that I know Tableau has already committed to doing in the future at some point um, is that they're going to add things to this test. Now, I don't know what those will be. All I know is when Tableau does something like this, this is never just the first release. This will get enhanced in the future. Maybe we'll get categorization. It's a little bit of a long list to sort of stare down. I'd love uh, this to be broken down into data sources, design and optimizations, you know, that kind of separation. So you can really break down where the work needs to be done. Do you need to go and do this in the data source or do you need to go to do this elsewhere? And um, the other thing I'd love to see is some tests around accessibility. Now, um, I'm, I'm not entirely sure if this is in the works or not, but nonetheless, um, accessibility guidelines have been something that have been really sort of prominent over the last few years. And Tableau themselves have been making strides to improve the accessibility of dashboards. Um, I'd love if this test was checking things like font sizes to check, hey, are you sure this is uh, you know supporting your needs for the users if they have issues with this? Is your mobile uh, dashboard optimized for touch? Those kind of small things. Um, is your is your dashboard going to work with a screen reader really really well are there things you can add to your image in terms of metadata to make it easy for someone who's visually impaired to read the information using a screen reader that kind of stuff would be super super helpful and i hope that it comes in the future nonetheless i guess this is why this is version one because we can always feed these ideas back into the product but nonetheless i think this is really cool now if you do make changes to this optimizer, you can rerun the optimizer right at the bottom. So you can see here at the bottom, you can just rerun it and uh, it keeps a score from the last time you run it. So you can see last run at 310. If I go ahead and close this, it goes back to the usual dashboard. If I go back, hit publish workbook, um, it'll open it up again. And if I go back into the optimizer again, it has the last run that I did. So when you open it, it's not redoing the run. You have to go back in here and rerun the optimizer. You'll get a new time because I've run it within the minute. It's not quite sort of setting up. You'll get a new run uh, here at the bottom and then you can go and check this thing. So it's like a proactive to-do list. You can fix something, get it to work and uh, hopefully see that change in the future as well. So I think this is a really nice feature. I'm not gonna go too much into the mechanics of how it works and so on. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. And um, one thing I should have done is just go on and essentially fix finish the cycle. So you can essentially just go on, uh, do everything you need to do here, go to workbook optimizer. If you close it, it closes the whole thing down. I would like that to go back to the publish work workbook interface. So I don't have to keep sort of hopping around. I don't know if I'm potentially missing a step here. If I hit escape, it just goes back. So, you know, I, I don't know if I'm missing something, if there's a shortcut, but I'd love to be able to just go back to this page so I can make changes, if that makes sense, um, in a familiar place that I'm sort of used to. But nonetheless, you do have the publish step right there. So when you're done, you hit publish, and it carries on with the publish as normal. So you do get this back here and you can go and hit publish. That didn't actually sort of make as obvious sense to me. Now that it's done it, it makes a lot more sense. and. You know, I, I, it should just go back to the, uh, it should just say back and then I'll go back to this and then we can go. Anyway, that's a small thing. Hit overwrite and off the workbook goes. I'm publishing to Tableau Online. Now this is also gonna be available on web edit. So you'll be able to do this in the browser, which is perfectly fine. I don't have an instance of Tableau Online that's been updated with that feature just yet. So I can't show you the web interface, but it's pretty much the same. It's pretty much the same capability as you'd expect anywhere else. So I think this is gonna be a really nice quality of life improvement, especially for people who are looking to improve their workbook performance. Now, one thing I'm gonna do if you've not seen my video about the Tableau Exchange, one particular aspect of the Tableau Exchange that I get really frustrated with are the accelerators. Now the accelerators are essentially templates. They're designed to help speed up the work that you're doing. But in my view, a lot of the accelerators don't really stick to best practice. So in another video, I'm going to be taking the, you know, 10 or so accelerators, maybe even all of them. Maybe we'll do that. We'll take all of them, run them through this optimizer and see how well they score on that basis. So check out that video once it's uploaded on the channel. Uh, stay subscribed. Join us on this journey to 50,000 subscribers. Um, the majority of you who watch this video aren't subscribed. So if you are one of those people, just hit the subscribe button. It really, really helps. 
and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching.